Okay, so here I have some dirty data. You can see that there are misspellings in the names. This should say Mickey Mouse, this should say Daisy Duck, and this should say Bart Simpson. This table I have called Dirty. This is not right. Let's get rid of that. So that table is called Dirty. And I want to apply some transformations to fix these misspellings, but I don't want to I don't want to do a transformation over and over again for each row or for each column. So I'm going to show you how to use list.accumulate um, to iteratively apply a table of cleaning transformations to multiple columns. And that's this table here, which is called substitutions. Each row represents a cleaning step that I will, uh, that we will apply to the dirty data. So we've got two tables here. The first thing to do is to create a query. I've cr clicked my create blank query and I'm going to use the advanced editor <clears throat> so that we can get used to working by with writing the encode instead of uh, instead of using the UI. So the first thing to do is to get hold of the workbook. Um, and we do that by using excel.currentworkbook. And let's just have a look at what that looks like. If we click done. Now that shows us a list of the data sources in the current workbook so that we can we can see now that this is a table and each row represents one of the two tables in the workbook. And if I click on that table word there, you can see that that is the dirty data. And you can see here, this is the substitutions. So <clears throat> to make this slightly easier, we're going to bring those into their own variables. So that will be dirty uh, WB, which is the current workbook. And then we are going to find the dirty table. So what happens when we do that? Okay, so that's brought back a table, but it's brought it back as a record. So actually what we need to do is use a record syntax to bring out this content field from this record. So we do that like this. We just do this content. That's the um, record syntax to bring out that field. So that's the table. This is the dirty data. So we need to do the, sec the same thing for the substitutions, which I'll call subs. And it's really the same, it's actually the same as this, except with a different name. So the name is, instead of dirty, it's substitutions. And then we can just put subs as the, at the end to check it. So these are the substitutions, so that's great. <coughs> so the next thing we want to do is, uh, what we want to do is we're going to use a function called list.accumulate and we're going to use list.accumulate to iterate through the, the um, substitutions table or the, at least the data in the substitutions table. So the first task is to convert that table into a list. So we're going to do that like this. We're going to call it subs list and it's going to be list.transform. In fact, no, let's start with table dot to list to list and it just expects a table so actually we can just put subs in here and subs list becomes the output what does that do well not exactly what we want because actually it's converted each row in the table into a single list element and separated it with a comma so what we need to do is we need to now be able to split out the elements of each row into a list of its own so that we end up with a list of lists where the outer list represents the whole table and each inner list represents one row in the table. So to do that, um, we're going to use something called uh, list.transform. And the first uh, parameter it expects is a list. So we've got table.toList is a list. And then the, it expects a function in the second parameter. 
So what we want to do is use each text.split on the current row. Um, and the default here is, since we've got a comma as a separator, and we're gonna see that this doesn't work in just a moment, but I wanted to just show you that it doesn't work. Um, text.split will go through each row in the list that represents the substitutions and it will split out each um, comma separated item from each row into a list of its own and we'll end up with a list of lists but you'll see momentarily that it doesn't do exactly what we want. So we've got a list of lists. So this is the first row. Okay, so column the first, Mose to mouse, fine. That's all good. Now this is the way the problem is. Because we've got a comma in this row here, um, it's, you, it's assumed that that is a separate element in this list. So actually what we need to do is we need to modify the table.toList to use a different separator when it combines them. So in this case, um, because I know there are no pipe symbols, I'm going to use pipe as the delimiter and my text.split is then going to look for pipe as the delimiter. So the result of that is an error. Okay, and what have I done wrong? Each text.split. Um, pipe. Ah, oh, right, yes, because this is, you don't just put a delimiter here, you put. Um, Combiner, you need a combiner function. We want to combine text by delimiter, and that becomes a pipe. So that should work. Okay, so now we've got the first row, the second list, the third list, and we've got Mr. Stevens' head of catering, uh, which we're going to re replace with Darth Vader, and it's working as expected. So now we've got a list of lists. So that's great, we've got this subs list, which is a list of lists. And what we want to do is we want to define a result, which is gonna be list.accumulate. And just make sure that the result comes out of the query. List.accumulate, um, the first parameter is the list that we want to uh, iterate through. And what list.accumulate does is it works very similarly to the lambda function called reduce. Uh, in Excel and it applies a function to each row or each element of a list. The result of that function on that row is passed as a parameter to the same function during the next iteration and that result is called the accumulator and the next iteration uses that accumulator in its function application. And the result of the second iteration is then passed as the accumulator to the third iteration. So this should be clear in a moment. So we, the parameter, the first parameter is the list. So that's our subs list. The second parameter is the dirty data, which is just that dirty table. Uh, because that's that's called the seed in this function and that's really where we're starting from because what we're going to be doing is using the table.transform column uh, function to basically edit the dirty data in place using the data from the list of lists of the transformations. So we're going to start with the dirty data and then each as we iterate through each cleaning step it will replace that dirty data with the version of the data after being cleaned by that step. And by the end, it will have iterated through all eight rows and all of the cleaning steps will have been applied. So in that, in that respect, it really works similarly to a data um, transformation pipeline. So this, this um, third parameter in list.accumulate is the accumulator function. And this function expects two uh, parameters. Now, if you see a lot of, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, videos or demonstrations or documentation online, and what they normally use is state and current, state being the result of the accumulation from the previous iteration, and current being the data 
in the current row of the list that we are scanning through. So the current transformation from that substitutions table. I'm not going to use state and current because it's a bit verbose. So I'm going to use, just use A and B, which is really what, what I normally do when I use the reduce function in Excel. So I'm going to def define this function um, in this way. I'm going to put let, not, you can tell that I'm not quite used to that yet. So I'm going to put let and I'm going to define a function first, which is going to take a single parameter, uh, which is going to be a text string. And this function is simply going to use a text.replace function on that text string. And the old value in text.replace is going to be the value in the from column from the substitutions table. Now remember, A in this function is the accumulator and B is the current row from the subs list list. And remember, each list, each, sorry, each row in the subs list list is a list itself with three elements. And since lists in Power Query are zero indexed, the first column is element zero, the second column is element one, and the third column is element two. So the old value is in element one of the current row, which is B. So that is the old value. And the new value is in element two of the current row, which is that. So I've defined that function. And the reason I've defined that function in that way is so that it can be passed into the table drop transform columns function. Now table.transform columns will take a table as the first parameter, which in this iteration is going to be the accumulator A. So when we begin, it will be the table dirty. And then on the after the first iteration, it will be the result of applying the first cleanup step to the dirty table. That will be A. And after the second iteration, it will be the result of applying the second cleanup step to the result of the first row and so on and so forth until it's completed all eight rows. But nevertheless, the table that goes into this table.transform columns is whatever happens to be in that accumulator parameter, which is A. And the transform operations, um, these are provided as a list. And what you do here is you provide a column name as the first element in that list. And the second element of the list, you apply a function that you want to apply to that column. So we've defined a function up here called fn, uh, which does a text.replace operation. Now, when you use table.transform columns, the function in the second position in the list of, transform, uh, of columns to transform must be a function of one parameter. So this function fn is a function of one parameter. It takes that txt parameter. So we can just put it in as it is. Now for the column name, the column name is actually in each element of that list of lists. Now remember, it's in the first column of the input table, and we converted this into a list, the whole table as a list, each row as a list within that list. So the lists of each row are zero indexed. This is column one is index zero, which is the column name. So to pass the column name into this table.transform columns for the current row, which of course is parameter B, we will put B zero. And that gives us table.transform columns, transform the accumulator in whatever column name happens to be in the first element of the list on the current row, transform that column using the function defined here. So <clears throat> that's a lot of talking, but the, the end result is that we, we've converted the input table of transformations into a list of lists. 
and then we've used list.accumulate to iterate through the outer list such that when we when we are passing through each iteration b becomes the list that represents one row and a becomes the accumulation of the transformations represented by those rows as applied to the starting value of the dirty data. And that really is the result of this query. <clears throat> so you can see here, this has now been cleaned up in both columns. We've got Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck. We've replaced Mr. Stevens, head of catering, with Darth Vader, as is appropriate. And we've replaced Bort Simpson with Bart Simpson. There's a problem here, Mini Muse. I'll get to that in a moment. Daisy Duck is now spelled correctly. James Mason has been replaced with God, as Eddie Izzard dictates. And a famous quote from The Simpsons, no TV, no beer, make Homer something something has become make Homer go crazy, which is the way it should be. So the that is actually finished, pretty much. The only problem here is that we have, we've got this mini muse. And the reason for that is that it's in the second of the columns and there is no transformation to change muse into mouse. So let's load this first of all, uh, into a table on a new worksheet. So that's great. We'll refresh that in a minute after we've changed the data. So one way that we can fix that Muse issue is just add a row. Um, we'll put the word Muse and we'll, we'll change it to mouse. And then we'll go to refresh the query. And it's, it's fixed it. So that is, that is really, really easy really easy, but there's one further step that I, that I want to show you. And that further step is to recognize some common elements of this query. First of all, <clears throat> there are some text values dotted around in here. Um, we've got the word dirty here, and we've got the word substitutions here, and then we've got the pipe as a delimiter here. Now, because these text values are the only thing that is really stopping us from using this on another table with another substitution table. If we parameterize those text values and change this query into a function, this query can then be reused for other situations. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. So the first parameter will be dirty table name as text. The second parameter will be substitution Institutions table name as text and the third parameter will be delimiter as text. So that's now a function and we're going to get rid of these text values because they are bad. Nobody likes them. They should feel bad. Like that and then we just put the delimiter here and the delimiter here and now we've got no text throughout and this is now going to become a function instead of a query we're going to give it a sensible name which is going to be multi substitution and that is now a function now that gets rid of that because it's not a query anymore however creating a query is now super, super easy because we can just create a new blank query and all we need to do is multi-substitution, the function. And remember the table names in our workbook are all we need to pass into this. And the, the pipe is the delimiter and that is all we need to do. We just call the function like that. And it will produce the same result that we saw before, the cleaned result. And we can load it. And that's it, that's the end of the video.